As I mentioned to you, I was going to start reading the book. I'm not going to use my glasses because I look. Uh, I don't know if I'd be able to look up and up and down, and I'll get all discombobulated. So, I dedicated the book to my wonderful wife, Robbie, my best friend and uh, wife, obviously, and Jennifer and Michael, my two wonderful children. Uh, there are 23 chapters, but as I mentioned to you, I'm going to at the end. Um, add an additional 60 to 80 chapters that I've had written with this book that I was told to condense. So, the first chapter is obviously the forward. <clears throat> Nothing splendid has ever been achieved except by those who dare to believe that something inside of them was superior to circumstance. Bruce Barton. I chose these because I think they all have incredible meaning. I never wanted to write this book. The mere thought of taking on such a project fills me with apprehension. I've never held great confidence in my writing abilities, and I've always considered myself to be terrible at spelling and grammar. In fact, back in high school, I barely passed English, which is true. But with recent advances in technology, including the development of speech recognition software, it has become possible for me to now convey my thoughts and feelings more naturally and overcome those old excuses. But my apprehension runs deeper than just fumbling with basic in English syntax and sentence structure. It is rooted in the excruciating act of opening old wounds to bear my soul and present myself as vulnerable in front of all the people who know me, or until now, who think they know me. There is so much more to that, and we'll get into it as we go. My biggest concern is always my children. When they were younger, I wasn't able to explain that I had to overcome so much to be the successful father they looked up to. Perhaps I thought they were too young yet to understand, or maybe I just wasn't ready to tell them. Then later, when they were older, discussing my anxiety and panic attacks with them was still a tremendous challenge for me. Yet being the amazing kids that they are, they understood and embraced me. They continue to look to me as a good father, a man of confidence, and a man who values physical fitness and strength, and I remain grateful for that. But now with this book, there is another part of me that they will learn about. After long, heartfelt talks with my wife, my business partner, and a few other trusted friends, I came to accept that I am in possession of an important story that needs to be told. It is a story of torment I went through and how it shaped me as a person. And on a very personal level, it's a story that I want my kids to hear and to understand. It is also a story that will help others who have to deal with severe panic and fear. I have often found myself sitting in board meetings or coaching on baseball fields and being told, oh yeah, I know what you mean, I have that. I have anxiety and panic attacks too. Then I laugh to myself. Sure, everyone experiences nervousness and fear sometimes. It's all part of being human. But very few understand how deep and debilitating a true panic and anxiety attack can be. It is my hope that by writing this book, I can help explain that, that and help all those people also afflicted with what I used to call the thing, by shedding light on not only what it did to me, but also on how it shaped the man I have become. There is a line in the movie Draft Day that says, sometimes the correct path is the tortured one. On some level, I agree. I recognize that there are many people in this world who have been through a lot worse than I, and I truly am thankful for all that I have. That I have. But this book is my story. It is about an overpowering. It is about an overpowering fear of not being able to leave my home. It's a personal look at agoraphobia, a term I didn't learn until I had suffered for years, and I reached the lowest, darkest point in my life. And it is about a lonely burden I never shared with my loved ones. How could I? I was a role model for health and physical fitness. I was a leader. I was the strong one. I was the tough guy. So now that all these years have passed, I am ready to tell my story. It is my hope that by reading about my embarrassing, funny, scary, heartbreaking, and happiest moments, someone will be helped. And I hope that the this won't just help the children, adults, athletes, business professionals, and others who struggle with anxiety and panic attacks every day, but it will also help the people who care about and love them, so they will understand them just a little bit better. 
And if you are a true sufferer like me, know that I do understand. And I invite you to use my story as a tool to achieve your hopes and dreams and goals, whatever they may be. That's the end of that, the, the introduction, the forward. But there's a lot in there. And um, obviously, you can tell I'm, I'm very emotional uh, when it comes to this book because it's me. I'm actually reading about me, and I remember things that happened in my life. And as I'm reading that, those, the passage, um, things come to mind, and they come and they go, and they come and they go, and it's a happier time now. And the only thing that I've wanted to achieve with this book is, and I am so happy that Bradley Hospital agrees with everything that I have written, towards the end you'll read a, you'll hear about my healing toolbox that they've agreed to partner with me and that makes me feel so great because my process is real and I know it's real because I've been through it so um, just a little bit about again the beginning I was very concerned about talking uh, to writing the book because a guy like me, um, you'll read about, I'm very successful in the business world and in the community. And people are going to read about this and I'm bearing my soul. I'm, I'm showing vulnerability. And as a guy that values his strength, if you will, on, a, on an emotional level, on a physical level, what have you, it teaches us that we're all vulnerable. I have received. I'm telling you hundreds and hundreds of emails. When I speak, people raise their hands and have question after question after question. And it's all about vulnerability. It's all about what this is about. It's about being able to bear your soul, if not to a crowd, to yourself. And understand that, you know what? I'm acknowledging I have a problem and I'm going to do what I can to fix it. In this situation, I'm going to discuss anxiety, fears, panic, panic attacks, which shape your whole life. And if God didn't give me the will to fight through it, I wouldn't be here discussing what a success I really am. It's a two-part book, okay? It's actually more than that. It's realization of what I had. I have written, I have them right here in the back of the book. Because when I talk, I look down and I sometimes I go off in tangents and I forget this is what I want to tell people. It's the realization of what it is, which was the number one step to my healing thought process. This is what's wrong with me. It's education. It's educating you on exactly what is happening in your body. What's causing you to feel that way? That also is the next step in the healing thought process. Because once you realize what it is, then you're on the road to recovery, to fix it. I don't care how bad you've had it. I don't care how bad you think you've had it that other people don't. You have not and you are not suffering worse than me. I am an expert. I know what I'm talking about. And the third part of this book is inspiration. I hope you live vicariously through me. I'm begging you to live vicariously through me. And I don't care what life you live, if you're in banking, if you're in real estate, if you're a stay-at-home mom, if you're whatever you're in, if you're, you have your own business, use my story and get better. Be better than what you're doing now. I don't care if you're at... If you're, if you're successful, become more successful. But more importantly, teach your kids or people you know how to become successful. Success is a lot of things to a lot of people. Money is just one. Okay, if somebody wants to be an athletic director, then go be the best athletic director you can. If somebody wants to be a teacher, be the best teacher you possibly can be. Make a difference in somebody's life. Don't just take a paycheck. I own a business. I do everything I possibly can to make my business, my people that work with me, not for me, with me, better. Why would you not want to do that? It makes you feel good and it makes you better. 
when I used to coach teams, my goal was not only to make the team better, of course everybody wants to win, but winning is a byproduct of making people better. The wins will take care of themselves. The, the, when you invest, take care of the pennies and the dollars take care of themselves. Well, it's the same, everything, it, everything I write in this book is predicated on success. It's an inspirational book, but it's also a self-help book to make you feel better. Feel better about yourself. You've earned it. It's your life. Anyway, um, that is the forward. <laughs> we haven't even gotten to the first chapter yet, which we will, and I'm going to read my book, and at the end I'm going to talk a little bit about it. And I, again, I implore you to, to, to write me, email me, do whatever it is, get in touch with us, let me know your thoughts. All right, so that's the forward. Tomorrow we will do the bridge. And, uh, well, I won't get into that now. Have a great day.